Hey, and welcome to another episode of Google Ads Aces, the show where we take a look at some of e-commerce's biggest and hottest brands and look at they're doing what they're doing uh, when it comes to Google Ads. Look at their, what they're doing well uh, and what not so well. Um, so in today's episode, we're gonna talk about Away. Away is a luxury startup that started around four years ago. And the amazing or mind-blowing thing about this brand uh, or this company is that today they're a market leader. Um, and that's no small feat because um, in the, the luggage um, industry, uh, all suitcases, carry-ons and stuff, um, there are companies in there like Samsonite that have been around for over a hundred years. Um, so to go to, to the market leader position uh, when it comes to uh, revenue share, um, that's, that's pretty huge. Um, so the way they did that is they built an incredible brand um, through uh, their PR efforts, through the content marketing that they did, um, and through social media. Uh, a funny story that when they started, uh, they were planning on, on launching in the holiday season of 2015, uh, but they realized that their products wouldn't be ready. Um, so what they did is they created a new product from scratch uh, that actually reinforced some, some of the things they were trying to do with the brand. Uh, so what they did is they created a book um, about travel, about travel experiences. Um, and they did that, uh, they collaborated with over like 40 influencers, put out a book, sold a ton, like not a ton, like a thousand copies, which is pretty good for, for a new company. Um, and they included in every book um, a coupon code to, uh, to redeem uh, for, 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 to purchase like a suitcase when they would come out a couple months later. Um, and like, there's two interesting things that I think uh, put, put the foundation in place for, for their brand is, is one that they focused on, uh, on the experience, on the brand, on the, uh, on the feeling they, they really wanted to give their, their customers that it's not just a suitcase uh, and you see it reflected in their, in their marketing, um, that, it's more, um, that it's more about enabling you to, to travel to, to, to other places. Um, and, and yeah, and, and what the book also did is when they launched and they had like those 40 collaborators slash influencers, um, it turned them into brand ambassadors. So if you look at Instagram um, right now um, and have for the last couple of years, you'll see a lot of people like sort of bragging or showing off uh, with their away uh, luggage. And it's not always that they're, that these people are being paid to do so. Um, away has, has turned it into, into something that, that people really want to show and they want to show that they, they are in fact a customer of the brand. So, I think this, this kind of free publicity uh, makes it super uh, powerful. So what did the way the different fr from those entrenched competitors um, and other startups that are out there? Well, one, their uh, direct to consumer model allows them to charge, um, even they charge the same price, they, they keep more of the profits uh, because a lot of other brands like Samsonite, they sell through um, resellers. So they, they sell at wholesale prices, which um, leads to them having a lot less, um, a lot lower margins. Um, the second is, is they, they took an existing suitcase like a carry-on suitcase and they turned it into, they added some more technology to it. Um, and the main thing, um, they, they, they have a lot of different features about it, but the main difference I think is that they put a battery pack inside. So a lot of people traveling, um, then that you can actually uh, charge your phone um, or um, or, or, or use it as, as a battery pack uh, while you're traveling. So uh, these kind of things um, made them stand out. Away does most of their revenue through their website. So they have a couple of different physical stores uh, and they're planning on expanding that. Uh, but as of today, most of the revenue comes from their um, online um, sales. So if you take a look at a website, it gets about a million visits a month. Um, and if you, if you look at the breakdown, around 40% of that is um, search traffic, um, and of that, about 75% um, is organic traffic and 25% is, is paid traffic. So in this video, we'll take a closer look at that paid traffic part. Um, so 25% um, of 40% um, is around 100,000 visitors. So um, a way, uh, runs Google Ads campaigns uh, for about 100,000 visitors uh, per month. Um, when it comes to Google Ads, um, I've explained what we're doing before. 
it's a lot about harvesting the demand. Um, like all the, the efforts like PR, content, content can be a super long play um, before it actually starts uh, bringing in money, but it has all built uh, the brand awareness, uh, especially now that, that they are the market leader um, and, and they have a lot of visibility from people showing off and people actually seeing a lot of the product. Um, it gives them um, a lot of people that, that actually naturally search for a brand. So, a big part of their campaigns is just harvesting that demand. So when it comes to branded searches, they're just bringing those visitors um, and converting a lot of them in, into sales. Um, when it comes to non-branded searches, it's actually super interesting. Um, if you do any type of search, um, it's in the US. Um, of course, where there are market leader, um, they're expanding abroad. Uh, but if you do any type of search, like a really broad one, for a term like luggage or, or suitcase, which, which have very high volumes um, of searches every month, um, you'll see that, that they're one of the only brands that's really appearing uh, for, for it. Um, and it's because like their size and their, their brand awareness allows them to advertise on these terms and probably also turn a profit. So these are terms that can cost up to $2 per click, um, it's a, which is pretty huge uh, because the, the term luggage, for example, has, has 165,000 searches a month, which is really, it's a lot to pay like to hear $2 per click for. Um, so seeing that they're one of the only brands that, that's aggressively advertising on that, uh, it means that they're one of the few brands that's actually able to turn this uh, into, into a profit. One thing that I noticed, um, and I'm not sure if they're, they're still doing or, or have done in the past, is they're, they're advertising on uh, keywords where people are searching for the, for the dimensions um, of actually their, their carry-ons. So a lot of people, uh, before they take a flight, they quickly search um, if their bag will fit uh, the actual dimension requirements uh, of a certain airline. So that, for example, results in a search like Delta carry-on size or something like that, or, or any of the other um, um, airlines. Uh, and that's really, those are searches that, that I, I would really doubt if they, if they would be profitable. Uh, but um, I've seen in my research evidence that they have advertised on these in the past. So um, I, I, don't, I don't really know what's going on, but it might be that their, their keyword match types aren't 100% and that these terms are like um, slipping in. So um, that's one of the, the, the first real feedbacks that I, that I would give to, uh, to a way to, to check up uh, and see what's happening with those uh, non-branded searches for airlines. Because it's, I can't imagine that somebody searches for an airline and then sees that their bag doesn't fit, orders a new bag from away um, for that same trip. Uh, so that, that's one of the first things that I, that I really noticed. So that covers um, the Google search part. Uh, when it comes to Google Shopping, uh, there's one really big thing that, that they're missing out on. So at the end of 2018, Google released a new type of uh, shopping ads. So you have the, the regular product ads, but you also have showcase shopping ads. And what these showcase shopping ads are, are more um, store ads. Uh, basically where you advertise your whole offering. Um, so you'll actually see uh, different tiles uh, of the different stores and people can click through on that tile and see all of the products that you are offering. Um, so Away isn't running any of these uh, showcase shopping ads. So when people are searching, uh, often on mobile, these ads will appear, uh, they just lose complete visibility and their, uh, their competitors are actually uh, showing up for head terms like luggage or suitcase or something. Um, and e even for branded searches, they are not showing up. So this is, this is a huge um, loss in visibility and probably also a loss in profitability uh, for them. Because if they're able to turn like the non-branded search, um, if they're able to attract that traffic profitably, um, they also should be running these showcase shopping ads. So that's I think one of the biggest things that I noticed in this analysis, um, something that they, they really should be doing. Um, another thing um, I noticed is that they're, again, like they did with non-branded search, they're also advertising on the competitor, uh, on their competitors' brands. Um, and this is not a problem, like sometimes it can be really profitable or maybe they just wanna be seen in, in the same category. But uh, for a market like luggage, they're, um, 
the market, this market is pretty segmented based on price. Like you have, um, I've checked the cheapest products you, have, you find on Amazon are about 50, $55. Uh, and away uh, their products start at around two hundred forty dollars. So it's already so if we, if we take that as like the basic um, luggage, um, that's already two forty two fifty. That's already at the top of the market. Um, then you have a next uh, batch of, of brands. Uh, for example, a brand like Tumi, um, whose carry on luggage, um, same category and uh, away, um, is selling for about seven hundred fifty. So that's like a step up. And then you have brands like Rumova, uh, which are actually um, crossing a, a, the, the mark of $1,000 um, and above. So that I would put that in the, in, the, um, in the premium where you will also have like real, uh, real big luxury brands like uh, Louis Vuitton or things like that. Um, so when it comes to Google Shopping, um, you want to compete as effective as possible. So if somebody's searching for that super high end product, that costs like a thousand or thousand five hundred dollars. Um, you don't want to advertise with your cheapest products uh, because you know that the consumer is looking for something different. Uh, so Away actually has two lines. They have their cheap, well, cheaper um, suitcases of around two hundred fifty, and then a more premium uh, aluminum edition of around five hundred dollars. So because you have these different uh, different products targeting different segments. Um, you can actually make a selection in, in, in your products to only advertise these, these more premium products to these uh, more premium searches. Um, so uh, th that's something you can set up with multiple campaigns and custom labels. So I think that this tweak could really uh, enhance the, the performance um, of these campaigns. When it comes to YouTube ads, um, I didn't see that they were doing a lot. I saw some things that are some ads that I've been running um, during the holiday season. Um, yeah, they were also doing some ad testing, not as sophisticated as we've seen in the, 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 the purple the episode of Purple Mattresses, where they're really taking uh, YouTube ads um, testing to the next level. But I do see like a couple of different um, ads uh, that are being tested of different lengths, um, different content, and you really see the ones emerging um, that, are, that are working. Um, so it's, um, it's, it's pretty interesting to see what they're actually publishing on their, on their YouTube channel. Um, but that doesn't mean that they haven't been doing a lot more testing that, that we don't see. So we don't only see the things that they, they, they release publicly. Um, but so no YouTube ads uh, as of now, probably they, they ramp it up during the holiday season or during the, the peak moments when they know uh, people are uh, buying a lot of, um, uh, of luggage. So when it comes to display ads, um, they are running display ads um, and basically it's, it's a simple remarketing ads. So I didn't notice that they were doing a dynamic remarketing, um, but this is something that, that I would hope <laughs> they've tried before uh, of showing the actual product that a person was looking at, um, show that in the ad. So they probably got the design chops to, to, to make something uh, like that work. Um, so I saw some some very nice ads. Uh, maybe they can uh, they've tried it in the past and it didn't really work. Uh, but that's another recommendation I would have. Like give give a the dynamic remarketing part a uh, try instead of um, having the, the more generic banners um, just of the brand. So maybe that's a that's a conscious choice where they're trying to communicate like the image of a brand, like the, the exotic travel um, or the, the product benefits or something. And, and that's the way to do it with their brands. And they're, they don't care about the, the actual products being shown, but more about the brand. So that could be one of the, the reasons why, why they're not doing it. Okay, so in the scoreboard, uh, this is the place where we put everything together. Uh, so I'm going to talk about a lot of numbers. You're going to see a lot of numbers. If you want to uh, find out more about this, um, click, the, click the link uh, in the description below. It, it, will, it links to a post where I explain everything uh, into more detail. So in the research, I found um, gross margin of one of their main competitors, Samsonite, which is at 57% gross, gross profit margin. So the way uh, Away sells uh, direct to consumer is a little bit different. Uh, so I would put their uh, gross profit percentage a little bit higher, uh, but maybe um, that's also uh, depressed a little bit uh, by the fact that they, they might not have like the, the scale 
advantages uh, when it comes to production that these long, uh, that these established brands have. So um, I put it around 60% just to be uh, on the uh, conservative end. Um, another research I found um, regarding the average order value puts them at around 250, um, at around 250. So that's actually just one carry-on uh, suitcase. So that's the, their most common purchase. So if we if we add that together, um, we and we, we assume first, as always, we assume that they spend all of the profit they make on an order. They actually spend that on ads. Um, so that means that they would make around one hundred and sixty three thousand um, dollars and wouldn't make any money. So they the, the return on ad spend, they would need to hit that. Um, so they, they spend about one hundred thousand uh, on ads. Um, it's about so for every dollar they put into ads, they need around one point seven dollars in revenue just to break even. So that's like the baseline that they, they can't go lower than that. Like if we take these numbers into account, that's the absolute baseline. So of course, um, a brand doesn't want to spend 100% of its profits on ads. Um, they have also got other costs, so it's, it's, it's not going to work out. So if we take a look and lower that uh, cost, customer acquisition cost um, and look at uh, what if it's 80%, 60%, 50%, um, we see that around the twenty percent uh, mark. So that means that twenty percent of their gross profits is actually spent on advertising, uh, which means that their customer acquisition cost is only uh, thirty around thirty dollars, which is pretty low. Um, they make back around eight hundred thousand in uh, revenue, uh, which results in about three hundred uh, about about four hundred thousand um, dollars in in profits. Uh, so. I'm taking that or I'm focusing on that because from from research um, I've seen that they, they need to make back uh, like a million two a million point two a month uh, from Google Ads so uh, just for, for, for from the, the scale uh, of that uh, they would need to hit that 20% um, of, of profit customer acquisition cost which is very sharp like um, I haven't seen a lot of brands um, being able to do that but in their position as a market leader, they have like other, their, their brand recognition is really high, which, which probably means, and they have solid products, which probably means that they, they are able to convert um, a lot of the people uh, coming to their, uh, to their website. Um, so that puts, puts us at around 800,000 in revenue, um, which is great. Uh, but of course, um, the, seeing the nature of the products, uh, not a lot of people are gonna need multiple um, suitcases or, or multiple carry-ons. So maybe you need a couple, maybe you need a check bag and, and one like a carry-on, uh, but you don't need 10 of them. Like we saw with the, with the Allbirds um, episode where we're, we see that people actually buy like multiple items. They will buy like up to 10 uh, pairs, some of their really good customers. So you don't have that repeat purchase model, which is for a lot of e-commerce brands. This is where really the bulk of the, of the uh, profit is in, in that lifetime value. Uh, so I found um, interviews with one of the founders uh, where, where they say that, okay, we're just focused on that first purchase right now and we want to be to turn a profit on that first purchase uh, because we, we, we know the nature of our products. Um, but with more recent funding rounds and, and you see the product catalog expanding a little bit, uh, you actually see that they are moving into uh, different uh, areas. Like they, they've uh, just released a lot of different uh, bags like a backpack, a toiletry bag, all these kind of type of things. And with new funding that they, that they just raised, uh, their plan is on expanding that product catalog and looking at more, um, looking to add more, more things to their portfolio. So if we take a look at the repeat purchase rate um, and we see how that might impact their, their total sales um, volume and their profits. Um, so we range it from having 0%, so that means like no one purchases again, like people just purchase once, all the way to 30%, which means 30% of people actually will purchase again. Um, and this is like the, for a lot of like really great brands, like they're around like 30 to 40%. Um, so if we, if we take a look at these numbers, we see that we're getting a lot closer to, um, to that million or, or million two that, that I was talking about. 
um, if we go towards a 30 percent um, uh, range uh, but that of course all depends on having the right products to back it up and having the right systems in place like marketing systems uh, upselling uh, right email marketing programs to actually being to being able to um, resell these customers um, additional um, items um, so to recap um, a way was actually built by uh, PR like great content and great uh, use of social media um, probably with some luck that that product really uh, caught on uh, with a certain demographic um, and that enabled them to to really capitalize on that with things like Google Ads um, and probably all of um, other other advertising channels as well where they were able to to, to mold all of that interest um, into into orders which has turned them into uh, market leaders um, so for the future um, if they get that expansion uh, right of their product portfolio and go um, broader go more international and expand to more um, physical retail stores um, I can I can see this brand like really uh, keep growing um, madly like it is now and, and, and capture a lot of um, other markets as well so um, I think the way uh, the future is looking uh, bright. So that was it uh, for this installment uh, of the Google Ads Aces series. Um, if you like to learn a bit more of what I talked about, uh, I have a link below in the description, which uh, goes through everything that I talked about, probably in a lot more detail. Um, and if you have another question or a remark or, or some feedback on the show, um, just drop it uh, in the comments. Thanks and see you next time.